Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi guys and welcome back to another sorting video. Might be the last one from this stuff. I'm only down to maybe like six or seven boxes here. It depends on how big these boxes are, what's inside and how much tape is left on this camera. <laughs> like I'm filming with the Super 8 or something. Um, we're gonna start going through these boxes. It's a continuation of this little mini series of a giant estate of toys and antiques that I picked up. And I've been meaning to get this out of the garage and get this all cleaned up and uh, this has gotta happen because, um, well, I have a car coming home soon. My old um, Daimler limo, if you've been watching my series from before, you're probably wondering what happened to that car. It's been out of the shop getting some stuff sorted and it's supposed to be back, it's meant to be back soon. And all of this stuff is in the way, so it's gotta get out of here before long. So I have gotta hop to it, get this stuff sorted, organized and inventoried because it's going to auction in December, uh, December 18th, I believe. Anyway, I'll firm up the date for sure. But anyway, it's going off to an auction and uh, I have a deadline to hit to try and get the stuff all there and set up. So follow along today as I do some unboxing, I do some inventory and we get this stuff organized. But let's see what treasures we can find in the boxes today. Where do I even start? Where do I begin? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is look in the box that's right next to me. And this has some antique children's little Japanese made um, tea sets. So you have the cups and saucers, you're ready for your little tea party. You can have a proper set of tiny little china. Isn't that cute? And there's multiple sets in here from the looks of things. There's that one, there's another one there. Um, that other set looked like it. probably a few sets at least in here. So I'll probably separate a, a couple of those out and get those inventoried and off to sale. I'm going to move this box out of the way because it's just at this point, it's just getting in the way of me getting to other stuff. I feel like this other tea set here has maybe Holly Hobby or some kind of uh, theme on. I'll have to check that out. Okay. Magic Auto Race. I don't know what the cars look like for this. I should probably look it up online and see. Uh, because I probably have the cars for this somewhere. I've been keeping little little tin cars and, and such. Could have been plastic even. Um, so I'll come back to that. Well, looky here. Nice little Oldsmobile tin plate with working headlights. Is that working taillights? No, it's got working headlights though. And it looks like maybe... Um, you can adjust the headlights through the switch or maybe it honks a horn or something. Neat. I, I say neat probably too much. I'm trying to be cautious of that, but that's the thing. That's what comes to mind when I see something like that is it's super neat. It's cool. Um, and the condition on that's quite nice. That's a good one. Nice condition there. Circa 1950. Well, probably the same as a car, 53 to 55, somewhere in there. And this, I would love to say that I'll have a chance to keep it. This Speedy Fix-It toy dates to the 1930s. That's uh, Felix the Cat in his little roadster, and it's wooden. It might be wartime. It has the uh, sticker still on the bottom. George Borgfeldt and Company, New York. Borgfeldt's actually still around. Borg, Borgfeldt Industries is still in business to this day as a wholesaler of uh, toys and, and such. They've been in business a while. Um, this was given as a gift to the, the lady that I bought all this estate stuff from. This was all her dad's stuff. And she said, if you come across it, please keep it aside for me. So I am going to do that. Unfortunately, that can't be sold. It's got some reasonable value, but it's more important it goes back um, to, the, to the owner. And I'm sure there's going to be other things in here that I can do something with. Like this uh, 19... 40s General Toy Product Canada. Weird Canadian little uh, Donald Duck toy. Now, he looks like he's he would have had two. <laughs> Most people have two arms. But as he goes around, I guess he 
does a little bit of that action right there. And oh, maybe, yeah, no, he probably had two arms and as you go, it would go ticky ticky tick and drum on it. But still cool even with just the one arm. And, you know, for a Disney collector, it's a neat thing to have on your shelf with your other Donald Duckery. <laughs> Another of these Holly Hobby little general store scales, that's not the same. I found one of these earlier, so I guess I've got a couple of them. Another one that's mint on card for those Holly Hobby collectors, which I'm sure there are out there. What do we have? Light up Santa Glow treetop and wall plaque. Is it as fun looking as the box implies? He looks more nervous than anything. But that's kind of a neat Christmas piece. And you don't often put Santa on the top of your tree. Usually it's a, an angel or something like that. But sure, Santa Claus, why why not have a uh, jolly, what is he, German? <laughs> ho, 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 he should bring beer for Christmas. I think that would be more in fitting. Or like a handful of barley. Um, so Santa Glow Illuminated Unbreakable. Unbreakable now. There's, I don't want to test that out. Cool that it's in its original packaging too, Canadian made, and uh, yeah, basically like new and original box. What was the price brand new? 75 cents, down from $1.98, so it was on sale. Apparently not a lot of people wanted to have a Santa Claus on top of their tree, but there are many Christmas collectors out there, so I'm sure something like that could sell for, the, you know, the right couple of people bidding on that. I wouldn't be surprised if that went between 75 and $100. So uh, a big markup from the 75 cents it was originally. But where are you going to find another one other than right here? Okay, digging continues. We have a little, uh, we've got a clown whose coat has come unbuttoned, but look how detailed. It's all string and spring work and stuff, and you can actually uh, make him move with these little knobs on the side to go forward or back or side, make his arms move in and out. Quite the articulated little toy, really. That's uh, quite a bit of engineering that's gone into this. So we'll get his coat done back up and then get him back out for sale. It's a very neat little, uh, if it was mechanized, you might call it an automaton, but it's not. It's just a uh, hand-operated, wooden, articulated toy. Probably from the 40s, somewhere in there. This is actually kind of a big box. I'm expecting there's going to be quite a number of things in here. What do we have here? It says... Sandy Andy, number 101. Patented 1917. Oh, is it for putting sand in? It's part of a bigger toy, perhaps? Oh no, there's a little dude. That must be Andy there. And maybe he pulled a string and it would dump sand on occasion. Pro oh, I get it. You'd probably spike it in a sandbox and you would have had a string attached and as he wiggled the string, it dumped sand down. Well, that's an odd little toy, but I've never seen a Sandy Andy toy from 1917 before. What else is in here? Here's a bigger one. Let's see if I can get her out. They sure like their smoking and drinking kind of toys, didn't they? <laughs> There's another. That uh, looks almost like a Laurel and Hardy kind of setup there. But it says uh, he's sitting on a dustbin. And I'm guessing the lantern would light up and he'd probably bring that uh, cigar that's in his, fallen out of his hand. That would go back in his hand. And I recall, not just yesterday, I think we have the missing hand for this because it's holding a, a thing of uh, alcohol. We found this random hand in a box, and I said, that looks like it's off one of those battery toys. And I'll be darned if I think I know where it is. Could it be a perfect fit? I had your little hand. I'll get that uh, fixed on there a little bit better later. But uh, what are the odds digging through all those boxes I found this dude's hand in amongst a bunch of other stuff? Pays to look through bins of doll hands, I guess. <laughs> I'll have to keep my eyes peeled for other parts. So anything that's missing a piece, I'm kind of setting aside for now in case I find it later. I was digging around in there and I found this, which is a little spaceman. 
And look, he's got propellers on his hands. I guess that's how he goes along. But he's designed to clip on the handlebars of your bicycle. So I guess as you'd go along, you'd see this little dude in front of you with his little prop spinning away in the wind. Kind of a fun novelty piece and still in reasonably good shape. Look, you could wear him as a fashion accessory. You like my new ring? It's all the rage. I don't know who talks like that. Whoever wears this talks like that. Oh, we've got a little carousel here. Give it a wind and see if it works. I mean, these are pretty basic. I'm running out of table space. Running out of table space here. I don't know if that spring's gonna hold any tension. Might need a new spring. So the spring has had its, it's met its match, but that's the idea, this is what it did. I just turned that crank the other way. The bell would ring and it would go all around. A simple fix for someone who's got uh, a little bit of mechanical skills. And you can uh, redo little, little gears or whatever it needs on that clockwork mechanism. And it looks like it uh, might have had the original price tag on. So that could have been like that since the very beginning. Who's to say either way, it'll go out the auction, out to auction just as it is. We'll, we'll put it uh, as in, in need for repair. It's still a cool thing somebody might want. Well, I looked it up and it turns out Sandy Andy was once a much more complex toy that had a ramp that ran from there down to the bottom and a little uh, car that would fill with sand and scoot its way down. So a little bit more going on than what we see here. This is just part of the Sandy Andy set. Mm, so it will be set aside in case I come across the rest of it, like I found the hand for the other guy. Maybe the rest of Sandy Andy's around too. Just pulled this one out of the box. Look, it's Beauty Contest Fashion Show. And you open it up, and apparently that's just what it is. Judging from the uh, swimsuits, I'm going to guess this is 1940s, and the fact that her name is Betty, Rita, and Rosalind. But, uh, yeah, it looks like you've got a blonde, a brunette, and a redhead. Typical. <laughs> it seems like every Archie comic alluded to all that. And there's no alternate dress-up clothes. I guess it literally just makes a stage. And maybe you walk them around like little puppets. Look at me. I'm the prettiest. You have social issues. You're awkward. Stop saying that. <laughs> I don't know. I've got to put that away. I'm starting to hear voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, put that aside and we'll keep on going. I think I actually did get to the bottom of this box just about. The only thing in here was uh, a couple little play sets and a uh, snake charmer toy, which would be super cool if he actually had the snake charmer basket with him. Again, another one of these toys where I'm going to have to go through my baskets of parts and see if I can find it. But I am finding things. I am finding parts for these things, so I'm not giving up just yet. It just means a little extra work to dig around and find the stuff. Moving right along, I have what appears to be another one of these sort of um, parts bins. It's got bits and pieces, you know, that needs its figures, as does that. I think that would put on like a little show. That looks like a boxing match. Probably two little boxers that went there. A horrifying armless baby that rolled around. <laughs> nope. But I do think I saw the arms for that thing. I mean, just because I think it's awful doesn't mean somebody else wouldn't like it. Polo bats. What else is in here? Wooden box. Is it full of treasure? Did you find the buried treasure? No. I found a top hat. Probably for a little guy like that. And some sort of space accessory. Likely off of a spaceship robot type toy or something. Or is it a, pen that's a pencil sharpener? Well, I guess that is just what it is. It's a little uh, spacey looking pencil sharpener. Yeah, it's kind of cool. But we do have some thermoses that are complete with their tops. We've got Hopalong Cassidy. One of the most marketed cowboys in history. In fact, he's so well marketed. Look, these people had two of his <laughs> thermoses. Got to get that hoppy stuff. 
And we've got another fall guy here. Found one of those the other day. It's another fall guy. And something's all wrapped up in here. Something's very carefully wrapped up in here. Don't, don't know what it could be. It is a set of pool balls. <laughs> Not even particularly old. Just pool, pool balls. I mean, uh, sure, you got a pool table. There you go. Or maybe you want to make these into shift knobs for your car. Lucky 13. Anyway. Well, that's another box done. I'm down to just basically one, two, three, one. Oh, there's still a whole bunch left. So we'll keep on going and hope to find a few more treasures in here. I was just about to uh, shut the box back up again and move along to the next one. I found this bundle. I thought, ah, oh, it's just a bunch of paper. You flip it over and look. J.E. Patterson Quality Bakery. And it's all coupons for one loaf of free bread. But there are thousands <laughs> of loaves of free bread. If J.E. Patterson Quality Bakery was still in business, I could go cash in big time. I could have such, I could build a, a loaf house, a bread house, not a gingerbread house, like a pumpernickel house of loaves of bread. Um, so that's a lot of bread coupons. Too bad they were never used. It looks like this was a salesman um, sheet. And it uh, looks like you would probably sign up at the door and they'd go door, door to door likely and uh, they'd issue it to Mrs. So-and-so. And, -so. and uh, you see how it's presumptuous. It doesn't even say Mr. or Mrs. It's assuming that the lady of the house is going to be dealing with the bread order. And so it only has a spot for Mrs. And then the salesman number. And so I guess uh, they would probably have a day-to-day um, bread delivery service and she'd give them one of the coupons every time they came by. Uh, something along those lines. But there are bundles of them here. So at one point in time, this would have made somebody really happy to have all that. Now, just sort of a novelty of days gone by. Okay, miscellaneous antique toys. Got a cast iron. Looking at the screw, it's flathead screw. It's a good sign. I feel like it's been repainted at some point, but that's neat. Airplane engine, possibly out of a Cox. Nope, it's a McCoy. It's the real McCoy. It's a McCoy engine. I don't know if that's good or not, but that's what it is. Little phone booth. Little kid's phone booth. Oh, I see. I was going to say it's missing the receiver, but it's right there. Right there. So it is all there. And we have a oh, Mickey Mouse portable record player. I can't. <laughs> it's like his DJ hand. What? DJ Mickey. Scratching those discs. Uh, when is this from? Probably the 70s, I'm going to say. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty cool, actually. Not only is Sears not around, but it's a Disney record player. And all those 45s I had at the other auction sale. Oh, it plays 33s and 45s. I guess you're in luck. Well, that's that's pretty cool. And then, uh, then I've got more. Well, I've got a bunch of trailers. What's this? Superior Spaceport. Well, that's probably off of something kind of neat. Wherever the rest of it is. Oh, there's so much sorting with the little bits and pieces that I have to do. Oh, wait, hang on. There's another spacey looking piece. Is this like a whole, maybe it builds like a little town, like those old Marx towns. I bet you put it together and it builds like a little playset. A spaceport playset. Okay. All right. I'm down with that. That's cool. All right. We've got a Mickey Mouse shooting target. Yeah, pull Pluto out of the way. Or is he putting him in front of it? <laughs> it's a firing range. Get the dog off the firing range. But don't put your head near a firing range. Oh, these wacky characters don't know the dangers and the perils. It seems a little off-brand, actually, to have a shooting game for Disney. But still, it's still, it's still cool. This old tin plate dump truck. Likely battery operated or friction. This one is 
friction. You can kind of feel the friction motor kicking in there a little bit. Needs a good cleaning, but it has a little articulated dumping action on it. Not an overall bad condition. It's got all the tires and the graphics are decent. It's just a little dirty, that's all. It's been in the toy box. What do you expect? Well, I gave it a little bit of a cleaning. It's a bit better, but the uh, patina sort of look is kind of charming, really. Fun little piece. So underneath the dump truck was this old, it looks like a Ford station wagon almost. It has three out of four wheels. And so it goes in the neat, but where's your wheels pile? Where's your wheels? <laughs> cool toy though. Yeah, there are people who actually park these things out and sell the bits and pieces separately. I was trying to find a uh, trunk lid. If you recall in a video uh, a little while ago, I said, oh man, I love this Mustang. Uh, Yonizawa, I can't remember the name of it. Anyways, Japanese. Worth about $500 when it's complete and working. Um, this is complete except for the trunk lid, which apparently goes missing really often because it's a piece that flips around. Somebody has one online. They want a hundred bucks just for the trunk lid. Now that would take that from being, you know, probably like a hundred and fifty dollar car up to being maybe like a four hundred dollar car. But then I'm gonna have to get the hubcap for it, and I'm gonna have to take it apart anyway to put that engine uh, cover in correctly and make it work. So I'm debating it. I just don't like spending. I, I I haven't ordered it or anything yet because I'm still hoping that maybe it'll surface in one of these boxes. That maybe one of these parts boxes, I will find the missing trunk lid. Another uh, shooting gallery target. And we have a Dennis the Menace Goes to School set. A little chalkboard, notebook, wallet, pencils from Chapman's Variety Store. Hmm. Looks like he needs to go a little longer. <laughs> All right, some advertising thermometers these are always nice it's out of quebec we've got another one these are wood thermometers blood blood heals summer heat temperature freezing oh weird i guess it has like reference points of different things on it. Parish and Heimbecker, grain and feed. All right, so we got another one here. Oh, it's Coca-Cola, wooden Coca-Cola, delicious and refreshing, five cents. Unfortunately, it's missing the thermometer part. That is an original, Rochester, New York. Coca-Cola stuff, always super popular. And being wood, that's gotta be actually quite a bit older. Because the 1950s Coke thermometers were, were um, they were metal. They weren't wood. There's a toy pump action scatter gun. Shoot some kind of giant projectile. <laughs> and some toy rockets. United States from the Top Flight Models Incorporated in Chicago. Astronaut's name on there and I guess... You have a little fun with that. Send that off into the stratosphere. Oh wait, there's a little Volkswagen. Tin plate Volkswagen, pressed steel. It's Tonka. It's a Tonka Volkswagen Beetle. Oh, isn't that ever cute? It's missing a headlight. Yeah, find something neat. It's missing a wheel or missing a headlight. Well, here's a another oldie. And what company is this? Nylant. Press steel uh, rumble seat roadster with the rumble seat still intact. I am making a certain amount of progress, but I have to admit, I'm getting a little worn out from going through all this stuff. This would be an accessory, uh, probably to a little mechanical car. It says bump to open, so your wind up car would drive into that and go into the garage and push to close. It says it's built by Metoy. And you look at the inside, you've got your garage type stuff. You got an extra tire tube up top there, a calendar. 
Maybe some blueprints for building a car or a race car. Tools and battery chargers and stuff. So oh, kind of a neat little diorama piece. You put that sideways on your shelf, put a little car in there. Nifty. Even though it looks like it attached to something, there was maybe another panel or something else that went on the side there. But anywho. Some various trailers and matchbox toys. Some older than others. Some in better shape than others too. That one still has its tracks on it. Well, this one has one track left that is a matchbox. That's just a, like an imitation sort of matchbox. It's missing its roof. that aside to put together as a lot we've got classic body buick limited reliable geez i used to own a car almost exactly like that i had a 58 buick you can tell from its toothy grill that's a 58 Holden power pack for a race set turret from a tank in Hassible's polyethylene oh unbreakable Polyethylene, cars of the world, 20 cars. And they're still in their little baggie. Another one of those headdress sets. There's another old Disney toy. It's the uh, Mickey Mouse with Donald Duck in the back. Dates about the 1930s or so. Reliable rubber company. I can see that I'm going to have my work cut out for me just basically pie piecing all of the stuff back together it's part of a train set piecing everything back together i mean it's good that they kept all the bits and pieces even if they did come off uh, i'm sure i'll find most of the parts that i'm missing it's just going to be a matter of uh really taking my time to go through it all this little pressed steel truck with the little sand bucket on the back there tin uh, battery operated tractor toy of course made in japan they made this um as a variation for with a robot riding on it too i don't think this is the robot one i think the robot one was more like a, a bluey gray sort of color but uh, we've got a, a few more army tanks a little missile command uh, launcher. Battery operated US Army uh, truck. It looks like a, um, maybe like a power wagon or something. And it's got the big rocket launchers on the back there. It's pretty neat. And this guy's wrapped up in plastic. I'm gonna take that out and have a look at it. Well, this looks like it was taken right out of the uh, sandbox. you got the dirt still stuck on the wheels. Would have had a little turret on the back there, but the gun itself is missing. Again, uh, probably something kind of like that. But the driver's there, the shifter's there. It's got all four of its tires, only missing one hubcap. So generally not too bad. Needs a good dusting, a good cleaning, but still a fun little toy. This box proved to have some reasonably decent stuff inside of it oh that's the cap for the uh, anti-aircraft or the, the missile launcher in the back of this big buddy l tractor trailer we've got uh, some tires a little corgi uh truck tank treads oh actually that might come in handy for some of those uh, tank toys that i found that are missing their treads a little tin plated friction uh, yellow cab okay we'll get that inventoried and organized and move on to the next box moving right along we've got a bin labeled toy trains and, well that's a child's iron in the original package a little saw I guess it's a little bit more than toy trains. Yep, there's some train stuff in here. Oh, that's a nice little, um, is that a, possibly a British wind-up? LMS. 
know if that's trying or what that is. It's a nice little clockwork engine though. Let's see if the rest of the set's in here too. Part of a Lionel, maybe there's more in here too. Streamline clockwork, is this Marks? Hafner. Hafner Railway clockwork. Well, I'll see how many complete sets I can actually put together from in here. And uh, hopefully it's just more than parts and pieces, but you never know. I don't know if that's part of that set. Actually, that might be, because I don't know how this is all organized. I don't, that's the thing is I don't think it was. It's no more organized than any of the other stuff. You got a uh, battery operated train engine with a Lionel tender. looks like part of a mark set maybe that's a little battery operated set actually a couple sets in there on that tray and maybe some Lionel down at the bottom okay tin plate stuff well some neat things I mean that's a nice engine for a clockwork engine I guess this is pretty much anything that was train, kind of train related. It's been my job now to see if I can piece together what goes with what. What toy belongs with what other toy? Good thing I mostly have an idea. And you can tell a lot of times what belongs together by what type of coupler was used. And of course the coupler is the piece that uh, is on the end of the car. So that's like a Lionel or Mark style. That's Lionel, yeah. Three rail track, Lionel, likely. Well, I'm gonna put together as much as I can in their appropriate uh, sections and see what I've got here. Here's kind of an oddball from likely the 70s or early 80s. It's a Commodore computer, but it's a video game system. So you've got your uh, joysticks, this cassette deck that plays video games. So it's a video game system that works off of cassette. Um, and then the keyboard to the main system right there. This technology, this old technology like this, is actually getting uh, and continues to be collectible as people look for these old systems that really are getting tough to find and uh, people actually stream them online. I had somebody contact me, maybe he'll watch his video, who's looking for old stuff like this. So we'll put that one through the auction as well as the Mattel Intellivision system that came to early forms of video game history. <laughs> Somebody's going to think that's pretty wacky and cool. Well, now for... I guess what should be the fun part, which is organizing stuff. All these times that I was finding a vehicle, missing a tire, missing a wheel, I've got to start separating stuff out, uh, getting this all cleared off. So far, I found the uh, original tracks for this Gamma Tank. So that was pretty good. Found both of them. So that's back together. Uh, need to find an arm for the little dancer guy there. And found uh, a couple neat space toys like this. It's a little mechanical toy that this tiny little car, which I found actually in a bag separately, but that is the proper car for it, goes in and it goes around and around, basically just making it go on this continual loop. And speaking of space toys, we've got the Sky Robot. This is uh, vintage, made in Japan, but is plastic. It's the tin plate ones that are typically worth a little bit more. And we have an original Lost in Space, Robbie the Robot. But he's missing his little claw arms. They've re reproduced this exact model as a wind-up for quite a few years. So getting parts to this is actually fairly easy. I could just order one brand new and it's got the exact same arms I need and the little antenna and whatever. But um, that was there. The little uh, Space Explorer rocket car. And we've got another little battery operated robot that has maybe smoke came out of his ears and he's got light up eyes. A construction robot, all 50s Japan, and of course, uh, Spaceman. So a nice little variety, and the condition, not bad really. Now, he, I think, 
Oh, he's got most of his battery uh, pack there. But I was keeping aside, um, I did find a couple little extra remotes that were designed for that type of toy. That type of deal there. I've been keeping some things aside um, so I can actually re-solder and uh, give them new remotes and try and get them put back together again. Oh, nice little collection of vintage robots. Neat little space toys, some cars. So bit by bit, I will uh, continue pressing on getting things pieced back together until I've got enough for this entire auction sale. Um, and of course, ah, this little guy there, I'm like, oh, what kind of car is that earlier? It's so neat. It's a Porsche. I should have known. Uh, I might hang on to that uh, Yonizawa Mustang and see if I can get the trunk lid for it because it is a pretty neat piece. Oh, a few fun items in the mix. And um, <laughs> a lot of sorting ahead of me, but uh, like I said, I can't complain too much because my, uh, my job is kind of a fun one. Sorting toys, that's my job. <laughs> Not the worst way to spend an afternoon. So that's it for now, guys. Um, everything is almost sorted and ready to go. I've got my boxes full of stuff ready to go to the auction. I'm gonna get that set up and then we're gonna do a big sale um, in the middle of uh, December. I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll see how we do. This is a lot of neat vintage toys you don't see too terribly often. Uh, it would be enough to fill up a, a toy store for sure. <laughs> or a vintage, you could re reproduce a 1950s toy shop with all the stuff that's here from the tin toys and the little remote control people and the, the tanks and the tin robots. Lots of fun stuff. So guys, um, I'm gonna get, I guess the next time you'll see me uh, about this batch of stuff, it'll be over at the auction house getting stuff set up. And uh, hopefully I'll get my garage space back here just in time before my other car has to come back. So wish me luck. Um, I'm gonna get back to work, get the rest of this stuff uh, patched together, pieced together, and uh, get it out the door. Thanks very much for watching, guys. We'll see you all soon, and as always, bye for now.